Okay, so you'll be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues on account of me. You will stand before governors and kings as a witness to them. Mm -hmm. See, they're going to arrest you because of him, right? And when you stand in front of these judges and kings and any of that uh, uh, judicial stuff, right? He said, here, uh, you're witness to them. You got to be a witness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I remember one time, really, I had to go to court for something, and, and I had been in New York at a meeting with my, my spiritual father, and uh, there was another prophet there, and he pulled me aside, and he didn't know anything about me. This is how you know when the prophet's on, right? And he said to me, uh, he, he said, when you go to court, just like that, he said, when you go to court, don't say anything. The Lord is going to take care of it all. And I went to court, and he gave me a scripture, and I'm going to tell you something. I was standing at that table with the scripture wide open looking me square in the face. And they asked me questions and I just answered what they needed. That was it. Amen. No charge. Didn't lose anything. Amen. And I trusted Amen. God. And I trusted the word of God coming through the man of God. Hallelujah. So you've got to remember you're going to go through these things. Again, I have to say, if you're really serving God, because if you're not really serving God, you're not a threat to the devil. And he doesn't attack people that's not a threat to him. He attacks people who are a threat. Mm -hmm. And he wants the fivefold ministry because what's the Bible say? Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Right? Just like they did with Jesus. Right? Okay? So, listen to verse 11. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry. <laughs> he said, do not worry beforehand about what to say. You see? This is the scripture the brother gave me, right? Do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. You know, don't be afraid. You stick up for the for the Lord. When I went to Cape Verde Islands a couple of years ago, the Lord sent me there to with the information to help the teenagers with the deportation stuff and all that. And when I got with the U.S. Embassy, at the U.S. Ambassador and her team, they said, what brings you here? I said, the Lord, I'm here on assignment from God to give you this message and to bring this op op option to you. Right? And we discussed it and all that. And then, boop, I left. Mission accomplished. Right? The, the, mainly stood with my friend who, who has a recording studio, but nice. mainly stood with him, right, day and night, and he took care of me. Praise the Lord for him, right? He took care of me, and then it was time to go. It was time to go after I went to the other islands and preached in other churches there. Hallelujah. So, you know, the enemy wants people who are serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And people complain, you know, you got to beware. And remember always there's two sides to every story. Always remember that. Amen? And like Joyce Meyer says, do not take on the offense of others. Mm -hmm. you got to remember these things, right? And you got to be taught these things from the Constitution, the Bible, so that you'll know how to react and respond when these situations come about, when you have to go to court, when you know, you know, listen, the only reason I'm here is because uh, I, I, I stick up for the Lord. Amen? And I try to encourage people with his word. And some people, man, you tell them the word of God, they flip out on you. Amen? Even believers. Okay? So he said, whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you speaking. You see that? But the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You see? Hallelujah. You're trusting God. You're trusting the Holy Spirit. Now, you know if, if uh, you're guilty or not. <laughs> and if you're guilty, you need to repent before you get to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Even the Bible says try to make it right with the person before you even go to court. Right. But if you got to go to court and you know your conscience is clean, right? Mm -hmm. You have, hold no malice or anything against anyone. Believe me, the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost, and you got the word of God in you, it's going to come up. It's going to come up. This is why I try to encourage you to read the word every day. To have a systematic reading plan. And to spend time first thing in the morning. Why? Because things are quiet. 
right? Uh -huh. Things are quiet. You can get up mm -hmm. early and, and just go to your certain car or whatever and just have a conversation <clears throat> with your father. Amen? Cool. Don't get all religious on him. You know, he, he say like any father, come on, sit down there, sit down, right? It ain't like I got to go there kneeling all the time. No, no. no yeah. He's my father. I'm his son. And I've been in 30-something years serving him. He says, come on, sit down, Dave. What's going on? He knows, but I got to get it off my back. So I just tell him what's going on in my life and what I think I need to continue the work that he's called me to do. Amen. You know, when I first got saved, I used to, as an uh, evangelist, go to different churches and sing and things like that. And there was one song that I sang everywhere I went because it, it, it touched my heart. And it was called, I Just Want to Know What I Can Do for You. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Me being saved, that's all I ever need, right? Now, Lord, what can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Because I know you can do and give me anything that I need, but I want to know what I can do for you. Because mm -hmm. you gave the earth to man, right? And you honor your word above your name. And so legally in the kingdom, you won't buy gin unless you have a human like Abraham, Moses, no, Joshua, right? He uses his sons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he says here, just say whatever is given you at the time. And then he goes on to explain what's going to happen. And get ready for this, because this is going to happen. It's probably happened now in Ukraine. It's probably happened. Brother will betray brother to death. What? When it gets tight like that and intense, people look out for themselves. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And that's just survival mode. It's, you, you, you can't blame them. You know, they're getting that fear comes on them. They don't know what to do. And some will just turn on their brother sell you out, in other words, yeah. right? So it said, brother will betray brother. It didn't say might. So you can expect these things. When you read the Bible, you expect it. You'll be like, oh, okay, I know it's going to happen somewhere in my life because I'm serving God, right? Brother will betray brother, and not just uh, brother, uh, blood brother, okay? Brothers in the church, you see? Brother will betray brother to death, right? To the point of getting them out of the church, to get, making them so depressed that they don't want to come to church right you got to think spiritually now you got to have a kingdom mindset about this stuff mm -hmm. yes and on the surface yes it's physical brothers having problems with with their brothers oh, right oh, so sure. brother will betray brother to death and a father his child mm -hmm. children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death isn't this what we're seeing Children yes. rebelling against their parents. And I'm going to tell you something. It really kicked off in the 60s, as far as I'm concerned. I know there was stuff going on in the 50s in New York and Harlem, drugs and all that kind of stuff. But when that British invasion came and uh, all that sex, drugs, and rock and roll, man, it flipped, everything tilted. Mm -hmm. So now, these are the results. Uh, again, when, when I go to juvenile centers and I minister to young people, I always apologize for, for my generation. I tell them, you know, you, you might not be here if we had done what we were supposed to do, right? But a lot of us, we selfish, want to do our thing, go our own way, and, and the kids get in jams, and, you know, then you want to come back and help them. They say, you haven't been around all this time, <laughs> right? So you, you want to do what you can here because it's going to happen. You see it happening right now. Uh, children uh, 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 rebelling against their parents and have put them to death. And because of that, when I read that, the Lord put on my heart to develop a, another program for my coaching business, and it's called Man. You know, it's called Boys to Men, and it is designed to help single working mothers with sons and no father to mentor, to mentor them, to help that mother by mentoring the son. And yes, at the, maybe the fourth session, the mother and son come together if the son wants it that way. Right, privacy, you gotta hip up, right? You gotta remember that stuff. But anyhow, it's to try to help prevent this kind of stuff, right? Listen, verse 13. This is hit the nail on the head. Listen, everyone will hate you because of me. Why? Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised what people are thinking underneath jealousy, envy, hating you because you're sticking up for God and you won't bend. You won't budge. Just stay in there. And I'm telling you, you know, we read how uh, a prophet is not recognized in his hometown with his relatives in his home. 
You need to think about that. That's why I wrote that book. So you want to be in the ministry, huh? You really want to be in the ministry? Well, yeah. check this out because these are things you don't learn in Bible school. Okay? That's going to happen. Thank God for Jesus. Everyone will hate you because of me. But listen, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's going to be confrontations and we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right? It's Ephesians 6. So we know that we're going to have confrontations and we know that in Ephesians 6 it tells us that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So we need to uh, be accurate with our sword. Making sure that it's sharp, right? But you knowing and studying the word, it is sharp so you can use the right word at the right time for the right reason. Amen. It's like a lot of people, you know, somebody is is a, 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 a sick or they have a wound, a, a cut, let's say, and you you pray for healing, right? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. First, you might want to pray for deliverance to deliver that thing out of them. You know, you don't take a Band-Aid and just put it over a, a wound without cleaning the wound. Mm -hmm. right. So see, there's prayers of deliverance, there's prayers of healing. And when you're mature, you start to see these things, you know, and you just take it into consideration. And you see what, what's happening through your knowledge. Mm -hmm. But the word is clear. Everyone will hate you. Why? Because of me. Mm -hmm. But the one who stands firm to the end... He will be saved. Hallelujah. 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 What are you going to do? Oh, See, I, I just felt like the Lord was telling me, you need to just make them aware of Mark chapter 13, Matthew Amen. 24, 25, all that. All that's about Amen. the uh, uh, end, you know, with Jesus and going through all, all this stuff we're reading about now. Amen. No matter what gospel you read, oh. it, toward the end, it, it tells you what the last chapters are middle to the end. Amen. We'll discuss these kind of things for us and teachings that we have to learn. But you see you see what's happening here? It's happening. Do you see it? I do. You know, sometimes we, we watch the news and we just are poor them. Guess what? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming to the United States. Believe it. It's, it's here already. You don't know the things that go on in the upper echelons of the government. Uh -oh. You don't know, right? I always believe that they really get together and say, well, I need to have a war because I got too many people and, and uh, you need money. So you make the guns and, and we'll go over there and kill the people. <laughs> Balance it out. People wouldn't, but they don't care. People who have power and stuff like that, it's all about the money. They don't care about human lives. Right? They might, uh, on, the, on the surface, uh, seem to be. But you've got to know that uh, if they were, well, why don't you just, you know... Uh, who was it? There was a guy, a soccer player I read about from Africa or something. And he he won't even buy a new watch. And he's making millions. He gives it to the people of his of his village and things like that. The guy's making millions. And they're asking him, how come he doesn't drive a nice car and all that? He says, I don't need all that. I don't need all that. He's happy. He's doing what God's called him to do, playing soccer, witnessing, has what he needs. Right? That's how people should be that are making major money. Amen. Like, you know, I thank God uh, for the. Uh, I was in California in LA and uh, I went to uh, Bishop Blake's church, right? Church of God in Christ. And that's where Denzel Washington go and, and uh, uh, what's the basketball? Uh, Magic Johnson. And they were building a church. Them guys each gave up like five or $10 million. Amen. They love God. I'm going to tell you that right now. I know Denzel, he's a man of God. See? But they also know that the end's coming. And so we have to do everything we can, regardless of what's going on, because we're already won, right? So now what we have to do is make sure we're dropping seeds every day into everyone's life that we meet, that we come into contact with. Drop a seed. Uh, praise the Lord. How are you? Well, God bless you. The drop seeds. Drop seeds. You don't have to sit there with a Bible and beat them over the head. No, you just live a kingdom lifestyle. Let them know about our kingdom, our king. Let them know about what coming into this kingdom has to offer. Like when people come to the United States, they don't ask you who's the president. They come because it's the land of good and plenty, right? So that's the way they want to come here. We'll magnify that by a million because that's how the kingdom of heaven is. 
right? But you can't get in without our king. You can't get in without a passport. And the cross was a key. Jesus was the door, Amen. right? The cross was the key. Thank you, Jesus. He shed his blood to pay for us. And now, oh, hallelujah, we can go in whenever. Our father's never too busy. Like, remember, uh, my mind, remember uh, uh, President Kennedy when his little son, John John, just would come in the Oval Office and he never, President Kennedy never said, get that kid out of here, I'm trying to do business. I'm doing world business. No, he, he let the son come sit on his lap. That's what God does with us. Amen. That's what he's a loving, kind God. Yes, God. So we know that these things are happening. And as I pray that as you now watch the news, you remember this message you remember this word and get ready and one thing get saved give your life to the lord right why not why not trust him trust him you've got nothing to lose nothing to lose and everything to gain hallelujah you know the word says that your family will be saved these are the kind of things that god promises when you come to him Right? You will lack nothing. The Lord is your shepherd. Yeah. He tells you that no weapons formed against you, son, Thank is going to prosper. Right? Amen. He, and, and then he says, in any tongue that rises against you, I give you permission to condemn. Oh, come on, Isaiah. Yeah. Right? So, you know, you come into the kingdom, you are protected mm -hmm. inside and out. Our part is to walk in obedience. Right? So that's what we need to do. Right now, some of you need to make up your mind. Because let me tell you something, an hour from now is not promised to you. Mm -hmm. My friend, a cousin actually, who, who uh, we did the funeral, he had a massive heart attack in his car. Came out of wherever he was, was in the car sitting there, <coughs> wife went in to take care of some business, came out, gone. Mm -hmm. Gone. You never know, you see? So you want to make sure you're right with God, right? That you know where you're going. <coughs> And on earth, thy kingdom come on earth, right? Colonize, that's what he wants to do. You know, kingdom on earth is supposed to be exactly like the kingdom of heaven. But because of man's selfishness, and, you know, God gave man the free will, and this is what man chose, the material things and idols and things like that, that are their gods now. Mm -hmm. So I want you to get right. I want you to, uh, listen, get right so you don't get left. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> you want to make sure that you are humble and you accept and begin to learn, get yourself into a church that's a Bible speaking, right, that teaches you. You see, there's people here right now, but we're sitting at a table that probably fits about 10, 12 people, right? People are taking notes. People are writing because that's what it's about now, okay? So you have to get saved. And I'm going to walk you through the prayer of salvation. You have to get saved. You have to give your life to the Lord and trust him with all your heart and soul and mind. He said, lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. And he said, I will make your path straight. Hallelujah. Right? He'll take care of you. But he's not going to violate if you don't want him in your life. Don't ask him to help you. You're not going to use him. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen. I don't know if you've got this fairy tale image of the kingdom and of God and what it's all about. This is real. This is real, people. Yes. It's real. The suffering that's going on in other countries and Africa and places like that because of the, the kingdom and because God has given them certain continents, maybe an emphasis where they have diamonds and different things, different uh, uh, natural uh, elements that man can turn into money, basically, right? So there's, there's a lot of trouble going on in, in these places. Because, you know, like Ukraine right now, I guarantee you, folks are calling on God. There was a picture in Facebook this morning, I think I saw it, and there was a bunch of people, maybe about uh, 80, 90 people in a square on their knees, holding hands, praying in groups of maybe three or four. Amen. Tell you what, that's going to speak miles and miles of messages to the people that see it. Because they're going through hell, literally. So we have to pray for them. Pray for them that there'll be a way that they can physically get out of there. But first, we want them spiritually out of there, right? And the only way that's going to happen is through the word of God. Romans, right? I believe it's chapter 10. They said, how will they know unless a preacher is sent? Amen. Okay, let's... Uh,
Let's go ahead and pray. You, you know, I want to lead you in this prayer. And uh, if you mean it in your heart, he knows. I'm just a mailman from heaven delivering the mail. Right? And I've delivered the mail. Now it's up to you to either open it, subscribe, or you can trash it, trash it, whatever you want to do. But I would counsel you to say yes. Just repeat in your own words something like this. Father, I'm a sinner. You know it. You know it. You know the mess I've made out of the life you've given me. And I'm truly sorry. I'm truly sorry. So much of what I did was in ignorance and selfishness. Father, forgive me. Forgive me. I want to come home. I want to come home. And I know my brother Jesus has made the way. So Lord Jesus, my brother, I accept and receive you as not only my brother, but my Lord and my King, my Savior, my best friend. Come in. Come into my heart. Take over. I repent of known sin. And I repent of unknown sin because I know the temptation is going to come and it's not the temptation. It's what I do with the temptation. So Holy Ghost, help me to choose Yahweh instead of my way. Hallelujah. Then ask the Lord, say, Lord, baptize me, please, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Baptize me. Help me, Lord, to, to have that Noah uh, knowing in me, the Holy Ghost who knows everything, who you said is the teacher and the guide. I need him in my life. Constantly walk with me in, in a companion, as a companion through this world. In the name of Jesus, grant me my prayer language. I thank you for the prayer language, Lord. I thank you for the language of heaven. And Father, you know that I'm just a baby now. I'm just beginning and so I trust you, and I thank you because I know you're a good father, and you're going to take care of me. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust and obey because there's no other way. There's no other way. You're going to see it. The more intense this gets, you're going to see it. Amen. Amen. So don't be afraid. You know, fear not. The Lord is on your side. Trust him. Stand up for him when people challenge you. Use his word, the sword of the spirit, accurately. Right? That's why you have to be in a church that teaches the word so you know how to use your sword. You don't yes. want to take your sword out and then use the handle to hit. No. <laughs> you got the sword, but you're using the handle instead of the shaft. So you want to learn. You want to learn. Preachers, dime a dozen. Preachers been going on for how many centuries? It's nice, we go to church, we hear the word of God, but how effective is the word? We know the word is all powerful, but the people don't receive the word, so we have to make sure that we, uh, we let them see Christ in us. You might be the only Bible people see. So do your best to learn all you can, and again, don't forget the uh, uh, program, the Kingdom Mindset Development Program on Kingdom Purpose TV dot com and dot radio Sunday morning, right? I even watched myself this morning at seven thirty. Why? Because I'm saying, look what God's doing. I can be in so many places at one time. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Reaching Hallelujah. out, reaching out, spreading the word. So it's Sunday morning, seven thirty to eight. Wednesday is the radio program from nine to ten, and you have to go to Kingdom Purpose TV dot com in order to get uh, access right now. Okay, it's on a lot of other stations, but I have to talk to the uh, creator more to give you more information. So pray for me, okay, please. Pray for this little worship center. This little worship center is the major things in this city and the surrounding area. Believe me, okay? So all the glory goes to God, but please pray because, again, when you're on the front line, okay, you get it first. You, get it, you, get, you have to deal with that enemy first. And it's okay because great is he that's in me. Than he that's in the world. Amen. 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 Okay, God bless you. Take care of your pastor. Don't forget, he needs your help this time. You know, COVID's kind of going on the down. You're not hearing that much about it because now you got the Ukraine thing, right? After that, there'll be something else, okay? But right. that man of God yeah. is here, that woman of God to help you. So take care of them. 
Okay, when when you need somebody to go do a dedication for your baby or do a marriage, you know you you're sending money to all these mega uh, mega ministries, and that's all right. But don't forget your local church, because even them brothers that pastor them churches will tell you, don't forget your local church. You tie to your local church. You can give an offering to them. Amen. And I've heard this from the mouth of Bishop Jakes and other people. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Okay, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the future, God willing. Amen.